Presentation on the formulation of ordinary concrete using the Drew Goris method. We begin this presentation with an introduction followed by granulometric analysis. Cement water ratio. Granular reference curve. Determination of the proportions of aggregates. Determination of volume and mass for each aggregate. And finally, a conclusion. Obtaining and optimizing concrete formulations is based on several major criteria workability, strength, durability, and cost. These criteria must be established from the outset before seeking the dosage of each component, and must be the subject of a compromise between the customer and the manufacturer. In this paper an experimental study was carried out with the aim of determining the formulation of an ordinary concrete intended for the construction of slabs and engineering structures. The targeted concrete has a mechanical compressive strength of 25 MPa with a slump of 8 cm which gives a plastic concrete of class S2. The experimental procedure starts with a physical characterization of the aggregates, we calculate the density, porosity and compactness. A granulometric analysis was carried out to determine the proportion of aggregates according to their size. In the field of civil engineering, several methods are used to define the composition of concrete such as, below me, Fourie, Vallette, Drew Goris, etc. In view of this multiplicity and diversity, the method of Drew Goris was chosen, since it is relatively recent and gives optimal results. The Drew Goris method is one technique among others that makes it possible to determine the proportions of the various constituents sand, cement, gravel, water of the concrete in question, starting with a granulometric analysis. This analysis consists of dividing the grains into several categories according to size using a series of sieves figure. From the sieve size analysis, we determined the proportion by mass and percentage of the different aggregates in the sample according to their sizes between 0.063 and 16 mm. This analysis allowed us to draw the sieve size curve figure B. On this curve we plot the variation of the percentage of cumulative sieve in linear scale versus the size of the aggregate, in logarithmic scale. Determining the water cement ratio requires knowledge of the target compressive strength of the concrete, the true class of cement used, the maximum size and quality of the aggregates. We define, first of all, the average resistance in compression which is only the characteristic resistance aimed at increased by 15%. In our case, the target resistance is 25 MPa. The water cement ratio is given by Bellomi's formula 2. The dimensionless grain coefficient g is related to the quality and maximum size of the aggregates used. In this article, the aggregates used are of good quality and have a maximum diameter of 16 mm, which gives a granular coefficient of 0.45. Most of the structures are built with ordinary plastic concrete of class S2 with a consistency between 50 and 90 mm. This concrete is very practical for solid slabs and engineering structures, for this study we chose a slump of 80 mm. According to the abacus, in figure C, we obtain, C equals 275 kg by meter. After determining the dosage of cement, we easily calculate the amount of water required by formula 3. We plot a reference granular composition OAB on the graph of granulometric analysis by respecting the standard NFN 933-1. The OAB reference grading curve shall be plotted on the same graph as the grading curves of the component aggregates. We then draw the dividing lines by joining the 95% point of the curve of the smallest aggregate to the 5% point of the curve of the next largest aggregate, and so on, resulting in two dividing lines. Le point the crossing point of the reference curve with the dividing lines allows to read the absolute volume percentage of each of the aggregates sand 0 quarters, gravel 3 eighths, and gravel 8 sixteenths. We find the following results, for sand, 30%. For gravel 3 eighths, 45%. For gravel 8 sixteenths, 25%. The total volume of the aggregates is given by formula 4, with gamma being the value of the compactness of the aggregates. 
The total volume found is 711.3 liters. We multiply this value by the percentage of each type of aggregate. We find the following results. We multiply the volume by the density of each type of aggregate. The following table presents the different results found. This presentation has detailed the different steps in the formulation of an ordinary concrete. This formulation is based on several technical, normative and economic criteria and is mainly related to well-defined mechanical and physical characteristics. The dosage of each element in the concrete mix must be controlled in order to obtain the desired characteristics. The obtaining of a formulation of a targeted concrete can only be achieved after an exact knowledge of the physical and mechanical properties of its primary components gravel, sand, cement. Subsequently, a granulometric analysis was carried out in order to evaluate the dimensional homogeneity of the constituent grains of the aggregates. Knowledge of the dimensional distribution of the aggregates makes it possible, in addition to knowing the targeted compressive strength and the consistency class of the concrete, to define the cement-water ratio required for the mix. The drew goras formulation method was adopted in order to define the proportions of the aggregates from the superposition between the granular curve corresponding to the aggregates used, the reference granular curve and the dividing lines. Finally, once the concrete formulation has been defined, it must be adjusted experimentally according to the results obtained from tests carried out in the laboratory or under site conditions. This axis will be developed in a work that follows. <laughs>